We're trying it again with the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We're in the second um, run of the Pope Leg here, and we are doing innovation. The first attempt was aborted because I made a terrible mistake, a terrible oversight, which made it so that the whole game would have been irrevocably tainted, and so we're starting again. And our combatants, our contestants, Runt, and Pegasus Dini, have picked their two starting cards. We have candles and pottery going here. And as I said last time in my abort attempt, it's important to just establish what those first cards are because they, they definitely give a feel to the rest of the game. I'll even show you what else they have in their hands. We have masonry here. Masonry and candles could be a nice combination because masonry, she can meld a bunch of towers um, and candles lets her get towers. And if she melds enough towers, cards with towers on them, she gets the monument achievement. I've seen a lot of people falter due to masonry because they really want to get those towers, but I've also seen it work quite nicely. So hopefully that'll work well for her. Fortunately, we know, but Pegasus does not, that Runt does not have any towers at all in, in her hand. Um, and it's going to be Runt's... No, no, Pegasus's turn to start off. So she's definitely not going to get that. No one has a higher score than her. I think she will try to do that. It doesn't do anything, however, because Runt does not have any towers. So Runt is going to get two actions, and we'll do those now. Come back later. Runt's taken in her turn. She wanted to use pottery to start getting some score, but because of Candle's secondary effect here, she's sort of stuck in keeping her score at one. If she goes higher than one, then that's going to mean Pegasus gets to draw an era three card. So Runt instead melded her second draw, her draw after she used this, in order to get city-states in play. Uh, not that useful, but right now, because there's no towers over there, and she doesn't have a lot of towers, but she didn't know what else to do, so she did that. Another round went by with just drawing of cards. We're kind of in a stalemate to start off, which is kind of refreshing, sort of, given the, um, the hu huge amount of flux that was going on in our last game where we got up to era three really fast and we had kind of a dominant player in runt here, corpulent runt. Pegasus tried once again unsuccessfully to use her candles. Uh, runt had two cards because of her two draws. Neither of them had towers. Runt is not so concerned about giving Pegasus towers, uh, but she just didn't draw any towers. Pegasus spent her turn drawing again. Now it's Runt's turn. She melded Sailing on her last turn. She's going to now dogma it. So let's see what she gets. Draw and meld a one. Bloop, bloop, bloop. This is always fun when we get to see what these are. We have a tower there, metalworking. And then does she want to do it again? She, now she's really reticent to score because if she scores, Pegasus gets to jump ahead of her, which kind of throws off a lot of the cards she has here as well. So I think she's going to again draw and meld a one. She's going to go for a strong board. Kind of like she had last time. Now she has five top cards. That's pretty good. Lots of icons showing. Strong board for Runt. Now if we look at Pegasus, I already know what she's going to do. She has masonry, so she's going to meld it, then dogma it. Which is going to let her put down all of these things. And then go ahead and take that monument achievement. So we have the first achievement of the game. Goes to Pegasus here. And both players have five cards on the board. Um, Runt does have this city-state, so she's going to be able to start taking, picking off these towers unless Pegasus does something quick. Runt did use city-states in order to take cards from Pegasus, to which Pegasus responded by giving her mysticism, which then covered up the city-states, uh, which kept her from using it a second time and protected a lot of Pegasus's cards here. Runt then dogma mysticism, which... Uh, Pegasus, of course, got the copy because Pegasus had so many towers, uh, which ended up working really well for, for Brunt's benefit because, one, Pegasus drew the last era one card, which Mysticism called, calls for you to draw and reveal a one, and then meld if it's the same color as any card on the board. Um, Pegasus got riding, draw two, not super useful once we're in twos, uh, which we now are because Pegasus drew the last one, uh, allowing runt to draw two when she drew and then also get an, an additional green two uh, so not too bad for runt runt had an interesting turn she used mysticism again but not before 
uh, putting down Sun Tzu. And what Sun Tzu does is it makes it so that if someone um, shares something from you, you can first meld... Uh, yeah, you get to meld any number of cards from your hand that share that icon. Now, unfortunately, Sun Tzu got covered up during the mysticism action itself, so Runt didn't get uh, managed to, to get to do that. It was a one in five, four in five chance she would have been able to meld some cards from her hand um, because of Sun Tzu's effect, but unfortunately, that did not work out. So if we look at our icons now, um, Runt actually has more towers, which... Pegasus had held more towers for a majority of the game and has lost her her crown bone her her crown advantage which Pegasus now has and now it's Pegasus's turn Pegasus had been all set to use mathematics in order to get to age 3 or era 3 I forget if there are ages or eras in this game but you know the the two piles now gone so she could just be in age 3 anyway now this would let her draw and meld it immediately instead of having to wait so she, that's still a viable option mathematics is generally I, I it's it's one of my favorite cards in this game it's a lot of fun to use cuz you can just keep jumping ahead if you want to take the time to do that we'll see Pegasus has taken her second achievement. She used currency to return a one and a two from her hand, which let her score a two and a three, which gave her the five points necessary to take a first achievement on her next action. Runt just got her first achievement. It was the Empire achievement. She did construction, which allowed her to take two of Pegasus' cards. And then because she has five on her board and Pegasus does not, she was gifted with the Empire achievement. And then she melded the flute, which is a fun card. It's a fun card to think about what, what sort of civilization. Sometimes it's fun to step back and um, get yourself out of the different effects of the cards and just think about the names for a moment. Think about what sort of civilization this is. So we have Rent Civilization, which has agriculture, construction, map making, pottery, and flute. Kind of a very artistic culture. And then we have Pegasus, which is masonry, archery, currency, and mathematics, very much more um, maybe a harder culture. Um, more goal-oriented culture, which kind of makes sense with their, their their two given personalities, though I don't think that these cards were there because of that fact. I think they were just mainly thinking about the effects, which is what you want to do when playing Innovation. Pegasus is now in Age 4, Era 4. She used Mathematics to return the card that she had gotten off of Construction in order to get an age four card, era four card, and then she melded it. Runt for her part, she got some points with agriculture, got three points there, and then she melded soap. As Pegasus uses her mathematics to enter era five, Runt gets her second achievement, this time prehistory. Now why does she have a one achievement when there's already a one achievement? Well, she used soap. She um, tucked three yellow cards, could have been three of any color, but she happened to, they happened to be yellow. And then she's able to achieve a card from her hand, which was this card right here. And that's what she did. And that's going to give, let's see, it's going to give her this four. I had an aborted thing earlier, so she should have this five right there. And then Runt is going to have another turn. With her second action, Runt stole these two fives from Pegasus. And this is probably something that wouldn't happen if these players had been playing and paying more attention, but it might have. One thing I've found with innovation is there's so much text. This is a verbose abstract, after all, on your own board and in your own hand that you oftentimes neglect to look at what the other person has. And so even though she did use this card once before, I think Pegasus was maybe so excited about her moving forward that she neglected to think, oh, hey, Runt could just take those cards from me. Pegasus had a quick retaliation though. She used the pirate code, the classic pirate code. If you've played Innovation, you see that come into play a lot to take the entirety of Runt's score pile, score, a car, score her precious mathematics, which is kind of a downside, and then take her third achievement. So we're at three achievements to two. Pegasus has the better score pile. Runt has the better board. Runt melded the steam engine and then Dogma the flute. That allowed uh, Pegasus to copy, which did this sort of drawing and revealing. But um, 
more importantly, it allowed them both to splay. So they both have some splay going. Interesting note about that. Uh, Runt had a lot more cards in her yellow pile, but opted not to splay that. Instead, splaying the flutes pile itself, probably because of this echo effect here. Thanks to Bartholomew Roberts for the idea of him, the pirate code is gone. He, uh, he allows Runt when you do his inspire action to just uh, score a top card with a crown from anywhere, uh, which Runt very sensibly chose to score the pirate code. Pegasus responded by using her newly revealed archery to take a five from Runt's hand. Seemed like a better way of drawing a five. She could have just drawn a five, but she took the five from Runt's hand and gave Runt uh, a three to compensate. Took something from Runt, then she melded that card, Chemistry. Now, Chemistry could be very interesting, but we'll get to that when we come to that. Right now, we're not at that. We're at Runt's turn. Run just used Peter the Great to get her third achievement just by melding him, uh, shifted the score scoring around enough to get her to the uh, 15 point mark, which is crucial to be at 15 if you want to get this achievement. Now, Peter the Great could potentially get her more achievements because it lets her achieve her bottom um, her bottom green card. So. The bottom green card's a one. If you already have a one, which she does, then that doubles it. But that's ten points. She still has enough to get it right now. So on her next turn, she could, she's going to be able to get another achievement unless Pegasus has something to say about it. Pegasus did measurement, which was important to her because it allowed her to draw a four. Why is a four important? Because four is the achievement that's up on the achievement stack here is the next coveted one and she had Antony van Leeuwenhoek Antony van, van Leeuwenhoek in her hand and that allows her each card that's in her hand to give 10 points towards the achievement of that card's number so now she has enough to take this on her next turn trusting that all remains the same. All right, it's Run's turn. Right after Pegasus' the last turn, I thought I'd just kind of do it live because it's kind of fun. So first she's using map making to demand Pegasus transfers a one from her score pile, if it has any, to Run's score pile, and she's gonna do that. And then she gets to draw and score a one, which is gonna be a three, and that's gonna put her at 14, 19, 20 points, okay? Then she can use Steam Engine and combine it with Peter the Great in order to do something fun. So Steam Engine says she draws and tucks two fours. Now Pegasus doesn't do that first. Okay, so she's going to draw and tuck a four. Now Peter the Great says anytime you tuck a card with a, a factory. Oh, okay, that was kind of a misread on that, that on my part. Maybe, does she have a card with a factory in her hand? She doesn't. Okay, so she's just hoping she gets a factory. Factory is even in this age. Oh, no, we're not gonna worry about it. Okay, so here's one with a factory. They are. Then she can score her bottom green card if she's eligible, and she's definitely eligible for 10. What she was hoping for is to get two factories there, because then she would have been able to achieve both her whole green stack in that one turn. Still, pretty fun. Pegasus, not being stopped by Runt at all in this matter, took her fourth achievement. So we're at four to four, we're going to eight. So we're halfway through right now and this game's going fast. Then she did chemistry, which allowed her to display her blue cards right. And then, uh, because it had some other thing with scoring, I'm not even gonna go into it. Then because she did that, she's gonna get to draw a five. Now if we remember, because of Antony van Leeuwenhoek. Um, this, this five here is worth 10 points, so that's gonna give her 10 plus five plus five, so she's at 20. If she can do, oh, she didn't do the scoring part though. So she should actually get another six in her score pile and then have to return a two here. 
So then we have 9, 12, 14. So she's one point away from being able to take the next achievement there. Runt. Unfortunately for Pegasus, Runt had enough to take that five achievement. So, and then she used Peter the Great with its tucking power here, which should have let her actually draw five as well. Um, with the Inspire action, she tucked a card with a factory way down deep here, and that let her achieve her bottom green card. Uh, so now, now Runt has six achievements to Pegasus is four. It runs starting to pull ahead here, which is kind of sad for me because I'm enjoying this game. This is where we're going to have to leave it for this episode of the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Looks like Runt has the game well in hand. Uh, she's got her own achievements, she's got her own score, she's got a stronger board. What Pegasus might have, and uh, I'll say that later, Pegasus might have is the ability to jump ahead in age, and that's maybe what she needs to try to do right now. Uh, is get get ahead of, of Runt and Age and maybe try to end the game on something else or get some sort of special card that's going to uh, give her this strong effect. We're seeing even with the green card balancing things, and I don't know if I've been doing it right because I, I, I lost my um, my figures in the sand um, rule book. I don't know where it is. Uh, I just, I, I, I don't know. Um, and so I don't know if when you achieve I, I've been playing it that you only get the, the extra draw when they do the standard achieve action. And I think that's the case. But there's other cases where people have been achieving, and I don't know if they get the draw action then. But that's... I, I, what, what does that matter? I mean, I guess it matters, but you probably don't know the game well enough to even know what I'm talking about. Um, but anyway, what, one thing I find about innovation is that, uh, especially as you add more and more expansions, there's different dimensions you can compete in, and th those become more apparent when you're playing with the, in the two-player version of the game, which is not a different version, but when you're playing two players, the, um, the dimensions that you can compete in become more defined. So oftentimes when you play two players, which is the basic set, you'll find that one person's going on score and the other one's going on board, right? And by board, I mean your like tableau of cards, okay? Um, in this, there's other w other things happening, and especially when you add those green cards in, um, there's this kind of all sorts of weird things that can happen with the game, so that it's very difficult to tell, and it's um, you know someone could can sneak up on you when you don't think they're doing so well. I've seen that happen many times. I'm not saying it's going to happen this time. Runt seems to be pretty dominant right now, but it's been fairly competitive through and through. It's just like Runt's been a little bit ahead of Pegasus all the way through. So it's going to be, I mean, a lot's going to depend on what card Pegasus draws. I think she's planning on drawing a six next uh, and hoping to, to get it done that way. Um, it's going to be a quick game, I think, which is not bad because I, it, I, I play Innovation a lot. So it'll be helpful to me if it's not stuck on this table for months on end. Um, but still, a lot of fun. Game I know well, which is nice to do uh, in the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Pale Plague 2!